What the? What's this doing in the garbage? Wait a second. I know this mask. There's only one person who wears this mask. Where, where is that dirty, filthy, El Vagabundo Dos Hobo at? He better not leave his mask here anymore. Even though it was Cinco de Mayo yesterday. This is what I think of El Vagabundo Dos Hobo Cuatro Cinco Fifty Three. Ugh. Stay there. I'm not here to talk about that. I just had to get some, some frustrations out. I've actually been pretty busy today. I was working a lot today. Which is good. I was working at home, so that means I gotta stay at home. Wear my wrestling t shirt. Play with my cat. And get work done. Because other than that, I'm here. Oh, shoot. I have to do that too. I forget. I, I will have to. I kind of forgot about that. And I have to figure that out too. So much stuff to do. I have to make a new rest. Four matches. That's not too bad. Should I have a gimmick back? Ooh, I might have that. So let me fix this. That's also my crisp new lapel mic. But I'm not here to talk about my hoboness in the hobo studios. I'm here to talk about Monday Night Raw. I'm going to try and make this a quick show because it's before midnight. If I could get things done at 12.30, I can actually get sleep because I have two jobs and two shifts at the one job to do tomorrow. I have to think, should I get... Let me check one quick little thing. I'm gonna hide this here. The moose! The moose! Ooh, I actually could. Uh, we'll, we'll see how I feel tomorrow. So on Wednesday, I don't work until late, so that's okay. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw, but very but first. Slow down music group! Thank you very much for your comment. Um, he left a comment about my show from Sanford. Uh, mainly the fact that he actually, I guess, did the research and knows the people in NXT. Sanford just has terrible acoustics. Acoustics. Whatever that word is. Sound, the fancy word for sound. And because they do not have bleacher seating, you're in kind of folding chairs. So sometimes, unlike the bleacher seats, it's just hard to film and write down wrestlers' names at the same time. And the acoustics is just terrible there. So I'd like to thank you very much for actually getting all the right wrestlers' names in. I think I got most of them, or at least the last names. Minus whoever it was that faced Rita Gonzalez. That's only because she was like a one-off person. That's okay, though. So, you know what? Because your name is Slowed Down Music Group, you, sir, are an honorary member. El Genetico Band! Let's have this video rolling around. I have been up since 8.30 in the morning. Tomorrow I have to be up at 7.30 or 7.20. 7.15 actually. So much stuff. These are my like three weeks of pain. Where I know I work 60 hours at the one job. Other job finished yesterday. What the fly buzzy. My cat was trying to with it earlier. Yeah, you can't see it on this on this camera. Not the best camera. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Um, 
first impression, that stadium looks empty. I know they do tend to black out. But they did at the end my son. They blacked out everything behind the hard cam. They did the ejects. It's terrible feeling. Wow. And I think at the Amway Center, they blacked out the very top row covers. And or they only had people across from the hard cam sitting there. I think when I got my ticks again, I had obscured vision, but they were only 30 bucks. Hey, I can watch the screen all day long. I am going to get this fly eventually because now it's starting to annoy me. But let's start off Monday Night Raw. Again, first thing, the stadium looks empty. And I know Raw's been having issues. I know tonight they had the two basketball games on, so it's always something that happens whenever wrestling goes, whenever professional wrestling goes against real professional sports, the ratings always dips down a little bit. So, so we'll see how things were received right tomorrow. Based on other wrestling shows, well, you need a nap tonight, I guess. I didn't take any naps besides the morning. Oh. Let's get to this. So Vince McMahon comes out. Eventually he calls out Roman Reigns. And Daniel Bryan shows up. Then Kofi Kingston and Drew McIntyre show up. It's everyone in the swimming pool. Uh, Rollins shows up too. AJ shows up. Seth Rollins shows up. Again, everyone in the pool. And says, no, this is not the house that AJ Styles built. This is Monday Night Rollins. AJ's just the heel that makes good points. Um, for the contract signing, AJ went. AJ actually was first to extend his hand in friendship. And with Seth, he said, here's my title. AJ knocked him out because of it. And he didn't, knock, and he didn't sucker punch him. He gave him the phenomenal form through the table. Big difference there. But AJ Styles is a heel who makes good points. Or the heel who tells truth. And this leads to the first match of the night. Because um, it's a wild card night. I think that just means four people from Raw can go to SmackDown. And four people from SmackDown can go to Raw. You know, it's supposed to be three, but, but we'll see why they got you later. So it was AJ Styles versus, and Seth Rollins versus Bobby Lashley and Baron Corbin. I'll tell you what, this was fun for the most... Wow, I actually did that. Oh, this was fun for the, for the most part. I liked it because it was kind of a flashback to the TNA days. I wonder if this will work. Wow, maybe that will work. It was kind of a flashback to the TNA days because I actually took a whole bunch of notes. Um, with AJ, I don't think AJ Styles and Bobby Lashley were ever in the ring at the same time in TNA. I mean, even when Bobby Lashley was just starting out, Again, if you want, you can always leave a comment or email and, and feel free to correct me. Say, Hobo Tom, you're a hobo. Go back to hoboing. You're not even good at that. You're definitely not good at your job. But <laughs> it's a whole other issue. Again, or you can always leave an email comment and say, you know what? I don't think they ever face each other. I don't care. Oh, wait, who's this? That's a hobo cat. Cat showed up. Let's go sneak away. There she goes. Almost. Oh, there she goes. See this little black and white blur. Stand at the door. Yep. There, there is a fly in her cheese, but you have to get it. Yeah, it's so fun to work at home. You get stressed out. You can pet the fuzzy kitty cat. So, but back to wrestling, though. Focus. Um, it was a really fun match. It was, it got to a point where, where AJ Styles and Seth Rollins, it's one of those things where whatever you can do, I can do better. Um, eventually both heels got out of the ring. Seth did his suicide dive on one. AJ Styles did the phenomenal forearm to Baron Corbin. Next. So you can hurt her in now. She just wants, she's just stalking the fly. Anything 
See that? Yep, she saw it. So again, anything that catches her attention is always good. It's like a free toy. That and when she brings lizards in the house. It's a whole other issue. And I found like three lizard skeletons. And I got a new bed and underneath the bed were just lizard skeletons. Perfectly formed lizard skeletons too. I am getting tired. So um, AJ Styles again. He hits so fast. And Lashley is just a brute in this match. Um, eventually AJ Styles. AJ Styles got some hiking on the back body drop. That was amazing. Um, Seth eventually gets a hot tag. Not once, but actually twice. Twice. In the whole match. Um, but then there was a face miscue. Between AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. Um, AJ Styles kind of knocked Baron Corbin into Seth. And again, Baron Corbin was facing him. AJ Styles formed him. Seth, Baron Corbin fell back. Seth and Corbin had the Naga knocker. And then AJ Styles went to go hit Baron Corbin when Seth Rollins was watching him. And you know how that goes, folks. Corbin at the last moment moved away. And Seth Rollins got hit with a phenomenal forearm. It was a powerbomb from Bobby Lashley to finish things off. And Lashley and Corbin win. Again, showing that discontinuity between AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. I'll tell you what, this was a really fun match. It was a good surf and turf match. I'm not going to let the fact that there was like a 20-minute promo ruin stuff. Sometimes those opening promos they just get long. And then we go to Sami Zayn comes <laughs> comes in, starts to run down people. He chose to run down I don't I, I forget what exactly what happened. Because I was kind of doing work a little bit and kind of semi paying attention to wrestling. Again, working is a he can do it and actually get away with it. Kudos to you. But Baron Corbin, uh, Sami Zayn, again, starts to run down people as always. This time Braun Strowman comes out. Wait a second, we saw this two years ago. Oh, he looks a little better. So this is Braun Strowman versus Sami Zayn. Dos. Ole, 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 oh, Because this time, Sami Zayn got, got tossed into a dumpster. Ron Strowman likes his dumpsters. And then the dump truck came by and picked it up. And away goes Sami Zayn. Then we have uh, the Lucha House Party versus three jobbers. That was a squash match. Making the Lucha House Party look at least... Better than the way they looked against the War Viking Raiders. I always forget what they call them. Um, it was for the most part it was a squash match. It was just really the three spot. It was the SDS into some flippy move into a splash. Jobbers lost. I mean that's what you expect. It's a can of soup. Then you have Ricochet <laughs> versus Robert Roode. And I think before this, um, to some of the women in the locker room, it was Dana Brooke, Natalia, and Naomi, got invitations to be ringside for Lacey Evans' first match. Um, Dana Brooke has a new outfit on. Either that or there, or she was just in street clothes, but it looked like a pretty cool outfit, though. It's like a red and white checkerboard sports bra, white pants, and a reddish belt, and a red belt. I thought that was a wrestling outfit. Actually, it's like, whoa, they're going to repackage Dana Brooke? Cool. Again, Dana Brooke. Rumor is you're single. So is this guy. <laughs> Terrible thug. No wonder I have no female viewership. That might change because I did send my my friend, uh, Cinco Mania. 
Again, if you watch Cinco Mania, you guys to see the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. All the wrestlers with some special guest appearances. And you also, this time, learn how to make bacon cheeseburger burritos. And colita margaritas. Good stuff. Um, so in this match, it was Ricochet versus Robert Roode. Roode just begins to stomp away at Ricochet, which is great. Um, Roode, is, he seems a lot more focused, a lot more like the way he used to wrestle when he was in NXT, which is good because on the main roster, they've, they've, they've killed his character off. Um, and at least this way, they're actually building for a money in the bank, but they want to sh show why Ricochet has his fun money in the bank. Besides the fact that he's going to do some insane ladder spot. Because, you know, that's going to happen. Um, Ricochet, I mean, he can flip off of anything. He does like a second row moonsault. If I tried a second row moonsault, I'd probably catch my foot and fall on the back of my head and have my brains all over the room. Top rope moonsault's different because there's nothing there. Because the second rope, if you're really dumb, your toes catch the top rope and fall. At least if you're on the top rope, I mean, if you kick your legs back, I mean, the thing is, not, not, nothing can catch. So the second rope, mood salt, you really have to know what you're doing. Um, he did finish it off with a 6-3 splash. And Robert Root, hey, he looks strong. <laughs> but there were some funny things. Like uh, Corey Graves said that the divorce rate in Cincinnati went up. Mainly because all the ladies saw that mustache of Robert Root. Still looks very magnum -esque. Um But again, this was a it was a short. It felt like a short match. But again, it's a good quality cheeseburger match. And really hard to screw some of that stuff up. And then we get to a little backstage segment between Rey Mysterio, Dominic, and Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe's just so menacing. Rey Mysterio's truly enjoying the time he's spending with his son. And I think Dominic is enjoying the time he's spending with his father. Great stuff. Of course, Samoa Joe comes out and spoils it. He's like, yeah. You have a, have a Dominic... Atomic Mysterio on a forklift match. <laughs> no. No, don't take that idea, WWE. Keep that idea. And I don't want anything to come back to me about that. Then we have the Lacey Evans match. I don't know, it was against the Jobber. It was a squash match. I was going to give it a higher rating. Lacey Evans is not good at talking, though. That southern accent does absolutely nothing for me. That being said, this was a piece of toast. Wow, it has been a long time since I've given a match a piece of toast. This was the last match that was a toast. Wow. That's good, though, because toast is the worst thing you can get. Oh, actually, I know what it was. Oh, wait, it was WrestleMania. Like a month ago. A Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio match. It's like, pfft, toast. Um, and then Becky Champ Champ shows up, jumps Lacey Evans, beats her up a little bit, makes the card go happy. What was that? Oh yeah, it was just a four. It was a four woman in street clothes. It was okay. Um, then you have Daniel Bryan promo backstage. Eh, it was good. You really can't do any wrong. Then the Viking Raiders versus Hawkins Riders. Hawkins Riders started off smart. They began to isolate one person. They would double team that one person a lot. They're they're they're, they're smart. Um, they double team when they could. However, the Viking Raiders are just too strong, and I kind of and even um Renee said she felt sorry for Hawkins, even though Ryder did eat the pin. They're not going to be holding those belts much longer. They're the super transitional champions just to give 
Hawkins a fuzzy moment and to make to say sorry for giving you the inter IC belt for a day. It, it was okay. It was a ham sandwich. Then we have Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. This. And the reason why I say it was a special match is because this match actually seemed a lot better than the WrestleMania match. And I think that's like the third or fourth time, at least for Roman Reigns, where his matches on TV for a televised Raw are actually better than the big stage of, say, a WrestleMania, SummerSlam, at least the big four, WrestleMania, SummerSlam. Uh, Royal Rum and third one. SummerSlam and Survivor Series. That's the one. And Money in the Bank probably the make would be the fifth major. But he just doesn't shine when the spotlight's on him, though. I mean, the small shows he. He can most of the time do no wrong. You put him underneath those big lights and kind of fades away. Trust me, I've never done pro wrestling before. Well, I did once. Again, in a small Massachusetts. So, I, I mean, I don't know what it's like to go out there with 90,000 people. I mean, I've spoken to at most. What's the most? Maybe think about two hundred ish. Maybe when I was a professor years ago. Maybe yeah, two hundred ish sounds about one hundred and fifty, two hundred ish. I mean, I think. Why do I think it was 500 once? And everything just kind of goes blurry. So it's not like the individual faces. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> so, no. Again, this was a better match. And Drew was just tossing Roman Reigns around a lot. I'll tell you what, that. That Alabama slam into the ring apron. Ooh. That looked vicious. And I know which headbutt is stronger now. The Scottish headbutt is stronger than the Samoan headbutt. Because Drew McIntyre gave him a freaking vicious headbutt. And it dropped him. And I'm like, Scottish headbutt wins. Um. Roman Reigns did go for a DDT, and Drew spiked himself. Drew can sell like it's known as business. I have to do that, too. To figure out other technical stuff. I need to set up my laptop so I can super hyper multitask. Uh, um, yeah, this match was really good. <laughs> or it was really good until the end. And that's why, because of the ending... We had a film, the dust is finished, baby! Because Shane McMahon got involved. And that's the dust that finished. But it was such a good match. This was a dusty old cheeseburger, baby! Because Shane McMahon got involved. And this is a WWE sweetheart. Someone got a win. And Roman, win Roman Reigns win by dust. Finish. DQ. So again, this match was a cheeseburger. Really, boy. Oh, I take these pauses. The timing's terrible. M mainly because because of the fact because of the whole ending. It was just really overbooked. Shane. Um, Shane McMahon came out, 
Then, of course, that brings the Miz out. And then, eventually, Elias came out. An overbooked mess. Shane, Shane runs, run, runs for his life. And people want to do interviews from people who are running away from others. And Shane's like, why are you talking to me? He just started to run down some stairs. Eventually, the Miz had a chair, caught up to him. They brawled a little bit in the backstage brawl area. Jamie Man got away on the Usos. And that was that. Um, Vince then gets on the phone, then he's interrupted by Lars Sullivan. So it goes from a three person wild card to obviously a four card wild card. That makes more sense. Four cards, because at least there's four suits. And then the, the Usos, again, they, they're, they're playing pranks on the revival. I want to see how this goes. Because this seems. Something very reminiscent of the Attitude Era. It seems like they're breaking kayfabe because this sounds like something they would do to someone that upset them. The backstage area. There's like whole kinds of stories about wrestlers defecating into other wrestlers' bags and being kicked out of locker rooms for e eating chicken and a whole bunch of other nonsense stuff. Uh, having to buy beer for the locker room. Because of transgressions and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we're supposed to have the revival versus the club. The Osos stuck Icy Hot or, 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 or Usi Hot into their trunks. No. 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 So, yeah, it was semi funny. I think I saw actually that hurts a lot more than they, they, they did a terrible job selling. Although I think Dash was selling more because he was kind of being more fidgety. And that would happen for his thoughts and like What am I supposed to do? Dawson just looked And then I guess there was supposed to be a match with No Way Jose. But quite honestly Lars came out. I don't even think it was a match. He just squashed, squashed No Way was the Jose. Took out the conga line. No way Jose tried, but it's just like he was back in NXT again. Where's Lars Sullivan? And then Naomi, something about her in the United Way. Hey. That's cool, I guess. Then for the main event of the evening, it was Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan. No Rowan was there, though. No Luke Harper's been asking for his release. I wonder if Rowan's in the same boat. Are they... Oh, wait. You know what there was? None of two. There was no Firefly Funhouse. Unless I missed it. And you can email and say you missed this. Also, check on YouTube. Tomorrow? Maybe-ish? No idea when. Well, when you go, you wake up. Change, go to work. Get set up for work. Work till five, come home. Work second shift. Go to gym. I don't know. We'll eat out. It's always checkers. Checkers is so... Oh, I have to get soda, too. I have a soda. I have to do that after the gym. Yeah. Or before the gym. I only have literally half an hour. I'll figure something out. Um, yeah, I just realized that. Yeah, I'll think of something. I always do that too. I don't know. We'll see. And then I have another video to make for Smack. I think it's kind of nice that I'm taking at least a week off from video from from any complex stuff. Let's talk about Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan. This was a really fun match. Um, Kofi Kingston, he has more of Daniel Bryan scouted, which is really good. It just just shows some wrestling IQ, some re wrestling acumen. Um, they both can do rope running like it's known as business. I mean, it's so much fun to watch two wrestlers who know how to run the ropes. Yeah, I know. It's like leapfrog. 
what was it? Duck leapfrog drop clothesline. And then the other person did something else. But it's really fun to see, especially all that chain wrestling. That's that's fun. That gets me kind of excited over pro wrestling. Well then see. They don't know a whole other issue. That's gonna happen. Dos weeks. Ooh, actually nineteen Yeah, but it's eighteen days. That's cool. Um with this again they have a different moveset. He did that kind of like flop splash, which is not the frog splash, but just he like jumps onto the first row and just goes, whoop, and you can hear him say it, whoop. That was cool. It's just like a flop. He like flopped on him. It's good. I like that. Um, that was a good back and forth. And then there was a frog splash he did onto Daniel Bryan's back. Whoa. Again, something new. That's really cool. Um, Kofi Kingston again. He did go to the well too often because eventually Daniel Bryan cut on. Um, there was the was a rough spot in there. Yeah, I guess there was. I guess there was a kind of rough spot in there. Oh no, I know. That the. the my only gripe about this match that eventually you could hear the ref telling the spot to Kofi Kingston. So, again, that microphone's a little too live. And that was my only qualm. And, and unless you're really listening and paying attention to stuff, you'd probably miss it quick. Again, when you know the industry and know people that work in the industry, you kind of pick up on certain characteristics. And tells for the most part. Let's see what time is it? Okay. Well, that's okay because then um, Kofi did win with the Trouble in Paradise. For the most part, this was a fun match. This was another surf and turf match. Crowd goes home happy, and that was Raw. Um, Raw still suffers from Raw, being that the Good parts are really good. The bad parts are just bad. I guess they're consistent at least. Well, that's raw. Um, so for the rest of the schedule for this week, I only have one more video to make. And then I can tranquilo. Actually, I can work. Because uh, tomorrow, my... Well, this will probably go up in the morning... Tuesday, I make my video for SmackDown. That might get up. Then it's nothing again until Raw. I'm up in the air. Uh, if I'm going to NXT SmackDown or NXT Sanford, I am going to NXT at Daytona Beach. I do have to check my schedule, though. You know, they put me on two times. I should really check that tomorrow or today. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Bye.